Mathematics in the Modern World. In this video, I will talk about the nature of mathematics, and I will speak about mathematics being a body of knowledge that is invented and discovered. Mathematics is both invented and discovered. The roots, the beginnings, the foundation of mathematics was an act of human invention. The foundation of mathematics was an act of human invention, but it gave way to a body of knowledge that was discovered. So we can imagine this person to be the man who was laying down the foundation of mathematics. Had he not planted the seeds of math, we wouldn't have a body of knowledge that is mathematics. So this person, because he planted the foundation of math, makes math to be a result of an act of human invention. But this seed grew to become a tree of knowledge. And the knowledge that composed this tree, much of them came by way of discovery. In other disciplines, you also have discovery and invention. But it's different with math. So the direction of development in math is invention than discovery. But with science, okay, I'm talking about the established body of knowledge, which is science, such as biology, physics, and medicine. So science begins with discovering patterns in nature, and it is followed by inventions to harness these patterns or to control the patterns of nature. So the direction of discovery and invention in, in science, like, like biology or physics, is you make the discovery. From the discovery, you produce an invention. Okay, the invention can be a method. It can be a technology. But you know what? These inventions and these technologies sometimes help in paving way for more discoveries. And more discoveries lead to more invention. So a case in point would be the discovery of penicillin. So Sir Alexander Fleming discovered that the molds, the penicillin mold, produces or it secretes these chemicals which has uh, some antimicrobial properties. So that part is discovery. What came after that is an act of human invention. It gave way to the mass production of modern penicillin antibiotics. So this part is the part that is invention. To concretize the relationship between invention and discovery in mathematics, I will cite geometry, Euclidean geometry as an example. So what is the part about Euclidean geometry? Okay, Euclidean geometry is the geometry that you studied way back in junior high school. So I want to use that as an example because all of you went, all of you went to junior high school. So you can imagine this person to be Euclid. And he is laying down the foundation of what is going to be known as plain or Euclidean geometry. So what is the part about this that is invention? His decision to begin the foundation of geometry with five postulates is the part of geometry that was invented. Because it turns out Euclid can produce, can still produce a geometry without using the fifth postulate. The fifth postulate is called the parallel postulate. So I will describe the parallel postulate in, in a manner that many students can understand. So it means something like this. When you have two parallel lines, those two lines will never intersect. So that is the equivalent form of the fifth postulate. And so Euclid begin his geometry with five postulates. The decision to begin it that way is the part of geometry which was an invention. Okay, again, what are postulates? Postulates are self-evident truths. These are propositions which are obviously true and which does not require a proof. For example, two points determine a line. You can draw a line that extends into two directions forever. Given a point and a radius, you can construct a circle with the point being the center. The decision to start geometry with this five postulate was an act of human invention. That means 
He could have done it differently and he could do it without the fifth postulate. You can remove the fifth postulate and you can still produce geometry, but it is a different geometry. In Euclid's mind, what he has there are a set of points and lines that lie on a plane. And you can look at a plane as a flat surface. That was what he has in mind. And so using the fifth postulate as the foundation of his geometry, that foundation gave rise to what we call plane geometry. But had he tossed away the fifth postulate, he could have produced a different geometry, something like spherical geometry. And the points and lines and angles here would have different characteristics compared with their counterparts in plane geometry. For example, uh, in the case of triangles, triangles in plane geometry would have an interior angle or interior angles whose sum is 180 degrees. But not so with spherical geometry. The sum of interior angles of a triangle in a spherical in spherical geometry is greater than 180 degrees. These five postulates gave rise to a body of knowledge that we call plane geometry or Euclidean geometry. So it's a body of knowledge and it is composed of these propositions. We call them theorems. And these propositions were not invented. These theorems were discovered. Now, how were they discovered? You know, when Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin, he was using tools. He was using the tools of a laboratory, the petri dish, the microscope. But in mathematics, the tools to discover the properties of objects that you are studying, the tools are or is logical reasoning. And logical reasoning is composed of axioms and the rules of logic. What are axioms? They are, they are statements that are self-evidently true. And I will show you one example of that. Look at this. If A is equal to B, B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. Is there anyone among you who will contest that that might be false? No one. That is self-evidently true. How about this? A statement cannot be true and false at the same time. Well, it can be true at one time and false at another time, but it can't be both false and true at the same time. How about this? All humans are mortal. Plato is a human, therefore Plato is mortal. Do you agree with that conclusion? Yes, you do. So this one is an example of, uh, this is what you call the love syllogism. And so, in math, the tools to make discoveries are not like the physical tools that we see in science. In physics, in biology, the tools are physical objects. In mathematics, the tools are not physical objects. Our tools are the rules of logical reasoning and they are composed of axioms and rules of logic. So mathematics is both invented and discovered. The foundation came by way of invention. That foundation gave to a body of knowledge, which is mathematics, or specifically it can be geometry, calculus. And this body of knowledge was put there through discovery. And the tools that were used to make those discovery is logical reasoning.